Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be designing and then 3D printing a rocket nozzle. The design comes from my method of characteristics nozzle design code that you can find on my GitHub, and here it is. And so, uh, pretty much we're just ha we just have these xnoz and ynoz variables that we're outputting to an Excel file that we can load into Inventor. So if I run my code here, then it'll solve for the nozzle shape, and it'll output the nozzle shape to a figure here when it pops up. There it is. So this is the nozzle shape that we're going to be outputting. Uh, I'm taking these green data points here and I'm putting that into an Excel file and we'll load those into Inventor. And so I output it to this XLSX file. If I open this outside of MATLAB, you'll be able to see the data points. You'll note that the units are in millimeters at the top here, but I don't care what these values are because I can scale it in Slicer when I load it in. So we're going to take these data points and load them into Inventor. Now we're in Inventor. I'm going to go up here to create a 2D sketch. I'm just going to click this plane here. We'll go to the Insert tab up here, click Points, and then you can see our XLS file here, Nozzle. I'm going to go into Options, and we're going to create lines because we want lines in between these points. OK. And we'll press Open, and you can see our points show up here. This is the nozzle shape. We just have to rotate it about this axis here. But first, if we just rotate it, it ends up being a shell, and I want a little bit of thickness so that we can 3D print it without it being too flimsy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click uh, Offset here, and I'm just going to take, and so I'm offsetting this line. So I click this line, and you can see I can kind of pull it up here. So I'm just going to, it doesn't matter what the dimension is, I'm just going to pull it up a little bit, like up to here. And then we can finish this sketch. And that was a joke. We don't want to finish that sketch. We want to edit that sketch because I want to finish the line. So I'm going to go to line, and I'm going to click this point here, connect it to that guy. And then I'm going to go to the start, if I can, connect that point. To that point. Now we can finish the sketch. And so now we have a completed sketch like that, and we want to revolve. So I'm going to click the sketch here, click revolve, and I'm going to click the axis, and I'm going to go into open up this origin here. You see we want the y axis. So click the y axis, it rotates it around all the way to the full extents. Click OK, and then if I uh, rotate this, Kind of, you can see that the that's the nozzle that we can print. So this, I'll save this out as a very simplified, you know, nozzle. So uh, export it as a CAD file. Go into here. I already have it as a CAD file from before when I did this. And so I'll save this and I'll replace it. Yes. And so now we have an STL file. Now we're in Slicer, so we can go up to here and click Add. And I'm going to add the nozzle.stl file. We're opening it up and it looks nice. And then you zoom out on, this is the size of my bed, which is 120 millimeters by 120 millimeters. And you look at it and it looks tiny. And I said that didn't matter because we can click on it, left click, go to scale uniformly. And I found that about 6,000% uh, will be a nice size when it's printed. Uh, we still need to rotate this guy because it is lying down. I don't want it to print like that. I actually want this face on the bottom. So I want to rotate it about the x-axis. So we'll rotate around the x-axis 90 degrees. And that'll put that bottom face on the plate. And now it looks like we're good to go. Let's just check some of the settings. So we'll go up here to print settings. First, I'll click down at the preview layer uh, because you can uh, preview tab because you can see how this is going to print up through here. And so if we go into print settings, uh, these ones I leave as the default. I'll click through these just so you can see the settings that I use. And you can always pause it and make a note of the things. But I'm still. I'm still messing around with some of these settings. Uh, if I go to infill, I'm still using 20%, although it doesn't really matter for this print because there's very little space where it's not, uh, where it would have been, uh, where there would have been nothing. So it's just, this one doesn't matter too much for this particular one. Um, if I go to skirt and brim, I like having a six millimeter skirt. I leave that one just to get that first layer down, just to make sure that it's actually extruding and sticking to the tape bed. The brim, I still put a brim on, five millimeters. Uh, and you can see that if I go to the plater here, so we have the skirt out here. This is the brim right here all the way up to the start of the print. However, in terms of support material, I, for my other prints, I thought, oh, let's put a raft on there because that way we get good first layer adhesion and then it, it'll stick onto that raft. I have moved away from rafts. I know that a lot of people hate rafts and they say don't use them. And I am starting to agree with them in the sense that uh, it's hard to take off if you don't have the right raft geometry and I don't know how to have full control over the raft shape and stuff like that. So I am no longer doing a raft um, in any of my prints. And if we look at the speed, I've slowed things down a little bit. I slowed my perimeters down to 50 millimeters per second. I've slowed my first layer speed down to 25%. Um, and also my travel was at 130 millimeters per second, but I slowed it down to 80. Um, 
these are just I'm t still testing things out. This this print I'm actually printing it right now is actually going quite slow, um, so I might up some of these speeds. The first layer speed was, even though it's a percentage, it was still a little bit slow. So I might try to change some of these settings. But this is what I'm using for this particular print. Don't have multiple extruders. Don't need to worry too much about these. I'll just click through so you can see. You can pause the video. And then if we go to filament settings, I'm using 1.75 millimeter filament. And the temperatures, the bed temperatures here, extruder, I'm, I'm leaving at 200 uh, degrees Celsius. The bed at 60 degrees Celsius for the first few layers. And then for the other layers, I'm bringing that temperature down to 195 and 50 for the bed. And the printer settings, this, if I go in here, again, is set to my size for my bed. And if we go back to the plater, again, you can see this is what the uh, layers will look like. Looks good. And then we can export the G-code. So we'll click export G-code. And I'll do nozzle.gcode into my 3D printer file that I'll put onto my SD card. Save it. And it saves it down here. And we're ready to bring it to the printer. All right, now we have the uh, G-code file on the SD card. I've inserted the SD card. And we're going to just start up the temperature just to get the preheat started. I'm going to set it to 195, even though the G-code uh, for the first layer sets it to, we'll set it to 200, and this one I'll do 55, even though the G-code startup sets it to 60, but this is just to get it started. While we're waiting for it to get up to temperature, uh, you might note that I have kind of some tape sticking off here on the sides. I've been re-taping the print bed kind of every couple of, every couple of prints that I do, and I just take normal scotch tape, or, sorry, not scotch tape, well, I guess it is scotch tape, masking tape like this, and I just take strips, and even though I try to not make them, or try to make them not overlap and sometimes there's a little bit of overlapping but it doesn't seem to affect the print at all so I like the way that this works and every time so I'm able to just take off one strip if there's one strip that ends up getting a little damaged when I take off the the print I'll just rip that one off and put a new one on it seems to work pretty well now that we're essentially up to temperature I'm gonna exit this menu here I'll go into print and then I'm gonna go down to nozzle.gcode and now it's gonna wait until it gets to the target. The target for the uh, extruder says 195. The target for the print bed is 60. It's not gonna start going until it gets up to those target temperatures. So we'll wait for that. Okay, now we're ready to go. I might set the multiple speed down a little bit. We'll see how the first uh, skirt layer comes down, uh, prints, and then we can check the brims. And if it's too fast, then I'll set the speed multiple slower to get the first layer just right. This is definitely slow enough. And I think it's because I changed it in the uh, in the G code. You might have noticed that I changed it so that the it's a uh, 25 percent or 30 percent of the speed for the first couple layers. So now it's printing the brim. It looks good. Uh, I usually get pretty good adhesion using this. So I'm just going to leave it at the multiple of one, and I'm going to stay here until the first layer is printed, and then we can then I can kind of let it go until it's done. Okay, there we go. The uh, print finished in two hours and three minutes, and you can see the nozzle sitting there. Uh, and now we'll take it off of the bed. So I took the nozzle off here. You can see the brim. I'm gonna take that off. The way that I did it was just to take uh, this X-Acto knife and just do a little bit of the scraping like this, and then I could kind of take it off pretty easily. There's a, I scraped it a little bit, so I might replace that one piece of tape. Uh, but this is the nozzle. It looks pretty good. There's only a couple of the threads in there on the inside, so they'll be easy to just kind of take out with my fingers. The one thing that's kind of annoying is that there's the, the there's this, this seam here, and it's because it's whenever it restarted a new layer, uh, it would start from this point. So I believe that there's a setting that you can say start from a random point on that layer so that you don't get this noticeable seam going up and down. So I might change that for the next run. So here 
here we have the final uh, nozzle printed out, and you can see the seam there. Uh, there's some mist uh, levels. You can see it pretty clearly here. There's some mist uh, layers on this side, and as you spin it around, though, then it's then it's really nice on this side. There's a couple strings in there that I can kind of uh, get out of there eventually. Uh, but this this nozzle was designed for uh, just to get isentropic flow throughout the nozzle using the method of characteristics. Uh, for this particular nozzle, uh, the exit Mach number is 2.56. That's if it's choked at the throat. And uh, the expansion ratio, or A over A star, is 2.78. I'm pretty happy with the way that this turned out for the first time that I printed uh, a nozzle, and I'll keep improving on this design in the printing uh, settings, but uh, thanks for watching this.